Hey friend, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Femke and I am a product designer making videos all about design and research. And today in this video, I'm gonna walk you through one of my favorite color picking tools, SIP. SIP is a really neat little color picking tool that I've talked about before, and it's a great way to collect, organize, and share your colors. And in late 2018, they released a whole new version of their app. And so I wanna walk through some of the new features and how I'm using them to collect and organize my colors. If you haven't tried SIP before, you can download it today for free. I think they have a 14 day trial and after that you need to buy a license per device. So I have SIP installed on two of my devices, both my personal laptop at home and also my work laptop. So let's walk through a little bit how SIP works. When you first download SIP, you'll notice that it appears in the top of your toolbar on your Mac. So this means it's really, really readily and easily accessible. I have mine to automatically launch at login, so it's always there anytime I need it, which is super useful because I find myself always going up there to use the tool. Now the main use case of SIP is to pick and organize your colors. So I use this very regularly when I find a cool color and I want to save it and find out what the hex code is. I've set myself up a handy little shortcut, Command P, and every time I press that shortcut, the SIP picker automatically comes up and I can easily click and select any color that's on my screen. One really cool feature about SIP 2.0 is that I can hold down shift and then select multiple colors. So that way, if there's a lot of colors on my screen that I wanna save, I can just do Command P, hold down shift, and you'll see as I'm picking here that it saves and stores all of those colors. I don't need to go and do them one by one. All of the colors that you pick end up at the top here in your color history. Now from here, I can sort, organize, and create brand new color palettes. You can see here, I already have a few color palettes that I've made in the past, one for my podcast, another one for my personal site, and then a YouTube one here as well for fun. Now it's really easy to create a new color palette. I can just click up here to create a new palette and drag and drop existing colors from my color history into the new color palette. One neat new feature of SIP 2.0 is smart formats. You'll see at the top here that I have CSS hex selected. Now this is the most common color format that I use as a designer. I'm mostly designing in Figma and so that works with hex codes really, really easily. But what you can do is you can change your format to a different color format of your choice. Maybe you're working in a different tool or with a different color format. So you can easily change the color format that you want to use or just click on this icon here and it will sort of smartly change the color format that it thinks you should be using based on the tool that you're in. Let me show you my favorite feature of SIP 2.0 which is the contrast checker. Now in here I can choose any two colors and the contrast checker will give me a score telling me whether the two colors I've chosen pass the contrast test. And what I'm looking for here is a score of AAA as this means that it's passed the contrast check of 7.0 or above. AA is okay if you're using font sizes less than 18 point. AA large is good if you're using font sizes larger than 18. And if you get a fail, then obviously don't use that color combination and try and adjust your colors to get a more friendly and contrasting color match. A cool part about SIP is that my color palettes can actually sit on the side of my screen. So I can have them very readily accessible whenever I wanna use them. And I can choose myself which color palettes I want to have quick access to. So things like a brand palette or maybe there's a special color palette for the design system that you're using. Those are really handy to have here in the side so that you can quickly grab them and see what colors are available to use. You can also save certain color palettes. Maybe you want quicker access to the color management of that palette. So just click on the heart icon here and that will save it for you in a favorite section. Maybe you have a color palette where you're not quite happy with one of the colors in it. It's really easy to open up the color palette, select that color, and then make any edits or changes or adjustments you want to make to that particular color. Just make sure that you hit the check icon to save it because I've made that mistake a couple of times where I just go back and realize that my changes weren't saved. SIP also really nicely automatically names your colors for you and some of the colors are really quirky and cool. But if for some reason you don't like the naming that they choose, then you can right click and rename the color yourself. You can also duplicate a color to another palette by holding down option and dragging the color into that new palette. 
One thing I do recommend checking you have enabled is in the settings, make sure you have the color profile set to display native. I didn't have this set before and I found that as I was picking colors on my screen, the hex value that SIP set didn't match the hex value of that color in Figma, for example. So while the color kind of looked the same, it had a different hex value. So make sure you enable this to make sure you're getting the true color from your screen. For me, the biggest benefit about SIP is that I can have all of my color palettes saved in a global place. So while I do have some color palettes saved within Figma, Sometimes I want to access these colors in another design tool like Adobe Illustrator or something like that. And having these color palettes in this global space means that I can easily pull those colors in and don't have to think about switching between tools just to find my colors. I'm curious to hear from you how you manage your colors. Do you keep all of your colors managed within a particular design tool? What do you do then if you move towards a new design tool? Do you manually copy and paste them over? Please tell me, I would be really, really interested to hear. For now, if you haven't, make sure you download SIP and give it a try and let me know your thoughts below what you think about this new version. If you have any other design tools that you'd like me to review and share my thoughts on, then please let me know in the comments and I will check it out. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.